Hello guys, in this video, first we'll see how Arslogix Emulate 500 software can be used to test a program, without any physical PLC. Then we'll start bit instruction, with normally open and close contacts. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's see how we can test a program without any PLC. This program has been explained and tested with my real PLC, in the previous video. First click on verify file and project icons, to ensure there isn't any error in the program. Then save it on your computer. Write a name for the program. Also at the bottom, determine a name for the processor. Now, let me open our Slink software. Click on the configure driver again. Then select SLC 500 emulator driver. Now, click on add, OK. Here write a name for the virtual station. I use its station number, 00, for the station name. As you see, a driver has been created here, like previous videos, but it's not detected any processor. To have a virtual processor on your computer, start Arslogix Emulate 500. Now open the PLC program, which has been saved before. Now select a number for this virtual processor. Zero has been used before. So, let me write one. If we came back to Arslinks, we will see a detected processor which actually is not real. If I open another program in Arslogix Emulate 500, the Arslinx will detect another processor. Well, let me select the first program. Now, in the Arslogix software, I can select and use virtual processors that have been created before, in order to test the PLC program. Maybe you see this message. Not able to start emulator. I have installed our software on Windows 7 32-bit. To solve this problem, for once time, I close all programs, then right click on my software icons like Arslogix 500. Select Properties, go to the Compatibility tab, and finally select Windows XP, Service Pack 3. I do this process for Arslinks and Arslogix Emulate 500 softwares too. Now, let me open softwares again. Well, let me open the saved program. Now, let me transfer the program to a virtual processor. As you see, at this time, the program has been transferred successfully, and this message says, do you want to go online? Well. 
the virtual processor is in program mode, let me open ArsLogix Emulate 500 software, and change the processor mode to run mode. To change the state of each input, I can right click on the desired input address, and select toggle bit. So, if you don't have any PLC, you can test your program like me with ArsLogix Emulate 500. As you see, the output is on. Let me turn off that, with changing in the stop contact state. Alright, let's start learning instructions, which can be used for PLC programming. You can test programs with your PLC or just simulate them on your computers with ArsLogix Emulate 500 software. Let's start with normally open and close contacts. These works like normally open and close push buttons. But here is an important point. Consider this PLC wiring, in which two normally open push buttons are connected to two digital inputs. Their addresses are used in the program to turn on off two lamps, which are connected to two digital outputs. In normal conditions, this contact remains open, because its related input address is inactive. So the first digital output and also its connected lamp will be off too. In the second line, this normally close contact has been used. In normal condition, its related PLC input is inactive and it remains close, so, at this line, the virtual power will reach to second output and turn on the second lamp. If I press two connected push buttons, the AC voltage will reach to PLC inputs. Then, the processor will change related contact states. So, the first contact will be close and the second contact will be open. At this time, the first lamp will be on and the second lamp will be off. Now, let's have the previous program with a little change in the wiring. Here, I have used two normally close push buttons. At this time, in normal conditions, AC voltage can reach two digital inputs that make changes in the related contact states. So, the first contact will change to close states and turn on the first lamp. For the same reason, the second lamp will be off. Pay attention, we didn't change the PLC program, but as you see, changing in the PLC wiring can invert its performance. Alright. Let's test this program. Try to write this program like me. Well, let me open the input image table. Here, you can define a symbol for the selected input. Similarly, let me use the output image table. Now, let's test the program. Here, I can either test the program with my PLC, 
or Arslogix Emulate 500. I prefer to use my PLC, but if you don't have any PLC, try to create a virtual processor with Arslogix Emulate 500 and test your programs on your computer. Now, let's transfer the program to a processor. Well, I must select program mode for my processor. Let me open the input and output image tables. In these tables, the state of each input and output can be monitored. Let's back to run mode. In normal conditions, when none of the keys are pressed, this normally close contact transmits virtual power. This point can be recognized by two green stripes around the contact. Therefore, the second output is activated, which causes the red lamp light up at the beginning. Now, let's activate both digital input. As you see, at this time, the first output will be on. All right, until now, we have seen different ways to detect states of our digital inputs outputs. First, we can use related LEDs on the processor, or check the state of connected devices like switches and signal lamps. Also if our computer is in online mode, we can use input-output image tables, or check the green stripes around instructions. In the next video, we'll learn some bit instructions and logic which can be used in PLC programming. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.